Now, moving on now, almost all aspects of man's existence has been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Some positively and others negatively. But uh, one point many agree on is that technology has advanced interaction between people across global divides. Now, the education sector is a major beneficiary of the world's new normal. With virtual learning, teachers and students no longer have to take a trip down to schools for classes, but are exploring various video interactive classes and online study guides. Here in Nigeria, cost of data and poor network services are only a few of the challenges hindering the expansion of virtual learning in the country. Joining us now in the studio for more on this is co-founder and CEO, Lead Inspire Network, Oluwa Shei and Ifooshi. It's nice to have you uh, this morning, Shei. Good morning. You. Good morning. How now, the, the new normal has come to stay where mm -hmm. it seems, in fact, a chunk <clears throat> of our lives have moved online right now. In fact, I can see traffic of everything online and it's really interesting on one hand, but not everyone is coping with that. Mm -hmm. But talk to us basically, now that learning, part of learning is, is, is gone online. What are you seeing when it comes to the prospect this has or the challenges of it? You see, um, just like you said, our world um, is changing mm -hmm. and education has to change. You know, societies all over the world are experiencing deep transformations and this calls for a new form of um, education that will, promote, um, that will promote and foster competencies that we need in our times. And so, you know, one of the things that COVID-19 has done in Nigeria, in my opinion, is that it has exposed us to, to an education system that needs urgent attention, you know? Someone said that um, before COVID-19, we had an education system that replaced learning with memorization, curiosity with, um, curiosity with curriculum, and then creativity with conformity to the rules. So right now, in my opinion, what we had was we had an education system that has boxed, uh, we have a system that has brought education into schooling. We, when we think of education, we think of schooling. Mm, the so, four walls of school. Yes. Right. So right now, the realities are, are there. So learning has moved from the classroom online. But the, the, the big challenge is how many people have access to the internet? Mm. We were not prepared for this. Mm. We didn't prepare for this at all. And so when schools were shut down, education was shut down. And so we, we then started to think of ways to come up, radio programs and all of that. You know, state ministries did try, but then the, the challenge that we see right now is how many people, how many people have access to the internet? How many children have be, access be, to the internet? Before we talk about access, how many people are even embracing this? Tr that's because the thing. A, a lot of people seem to, I, I just read a report where parents are angry that they have to pay for third term for schooling of their children <laughs> virtually. It, yeah. it is like uh, my child was not in the four walls of the <laughs> school. It, I was there with them while they were in class and you know, because parents have to oversee mm. what their children are doing. So how do we first of all, allow or make parents embrace this a lot of parents who even have access in the first place embrace this and see this as an option you see um, the, the like i said the other time the reality is that we have to move online mm. you know but I, I don't think that the i don't think the issue is is um is what you said now the issue is that most of them don't a lot of people cannot afford it you know a lot of people cannot afford access to the int, um, you know data is a big issue you know and so we must you know we we must our parents must understand that learning we must accept the new normal. Mm. That's, that's the thing. The new we have no but, option. But, uh, yeah. We don't have an option to that. Okay, but, but in, in accepting the new normal now, uh, talk to us about the deliberateness, because you talked about curriculum earlier on. Yeah. Mm. Now, the standard or the benchmarks by which anyone was taught before was based on curriculum, and the curriculum was deliberately designed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Now that we are online, We've left the, you know, we've left the world. We are, we are in space now <laughs> online. 
Is there any deliberate deliberateness in trying to ensure that this is what it will be and the guide towards what it can achieve? That's why that's why we're we're asking for government um, intervention. That's why we're asking for curriculum redesign. You know, because our curriculum, the curriculum that we were using before, it cannot solve our problems right now. We want an education system that is functional, you know, an education system that will make us not depend on, you know, we, we have to move from our, our curriculum before, places emphasis on certification and qualification. Yeah. People just go to school to get the certificate or to get a qualification and they're out. But since we have the open space now, right where now. You, you, in fact, there are people these days, you, you can sit in front of, uh, the, of, of, of the, the computer and learn anything, anything you want to learn. You want. Yeah. So, so can there be a campaign now where people should be um, hands-on with the skills of what they want to do rather than waiting to enter into school to get the certification? Our, our resourcefulness mm. as a nation is tied to our research. Okay. And then research is, in this age and time, is tied to the internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the, so mm -hmm. if we want to be resourceful at this time, we need to promote research. We need to promote across all education sectors. Mm -hmm. And then when we're promoting research, we're invariably promoting access to the internet because internet offers the foundation for research right. at this time. All right. All right, before we look at uh, the aspects of cost of data and the challenges basically for you know, I, I am embracing uh, virtual learning, let's look at if we have those who are skilled at delivering, especially teachers, if they are skilled enough. Because when you talk about virtual learning, there are skills required for you to be able to pass that knowledge across to the child virtually do we have that skill for teachers yes we um even it, it, it might not be enough you know when w we started the other time i talked about the fact that we were not prepared for this mm. and so not all teachers are equipped to teach online it, not all teachers are fully equipped for virtual learning however before before now um there have been series that there have been propaganda there have been promotions on teacher literacy, digital literacy. You know, we've been trying to talk about that before COVID-19 started. And so right now, we do not have any choice. So, but we want teachers to understand that there is the need for them to develop themselves, to, to, be, to be literate digitally, you know. So that's, why we are, that's where we are right now. All right, now let's talk about the issue of cost and uh, uh, affordability. Okay. Because the point there is you, you're teaching, you know, a group of people and everyone is expected to have access to internet to be able to follow what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how, how do we contend with that? Because uh, uh, when, you, when you talk about either there has to be a subsidy by government, a lot of people will talk about issues of subsidy right now. Yeah. It's a word no one wants to, to hear anyone mention. How do we handle that? So what, what we're... What we're trying to do at this point is to see how government can come in, how stakeholders in communication, stakeholders in telecommunication can come in to help us make internet affordable for people. I, I happened to travel sometimes about a few, few years ago and when I understood and I saw how people used internet, I, I was shocked, you know, and so, I, my, my, my question then was, why are we paying for, for, for data cap in this country? Why are we, you know, I, I do not want to go there, but why are we paying for data cap? You know, outside the country, what they pay for is speed, the bandwidth. Okay. But here we are paying for data cap, and then that's limiting. And so what we are trying to do now is to have um, a, 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 a meeting where government and stakeholders in telecommunication can come together and see how we can make internet affordable for people. You know, that there have been series of webinars out there. How many teachers are able to attend? How many people can afford the internet to attend those events going on online? Mm -hmm. And so at this point, there is the need to ensure that internet is made affordable for everyone.
All right. Uh, there's so much to talk about with regards to this, especially when you look at the number of children that are out of school and have yeah. to reach them as well. But we have to leave the conversation here. Thank you so much, Uluwashi. Thank you. And Fuguchi, for Thank your you time. very much.